Hello! In Next.js there's a new routing system and it's pretty cool. So in this video we're gonna take a look at some concepts and some file types that are new and how they really help not only the uh, developer experience but also um, you know how they save you time in the development process and I think it's definitely learning these new concepts because eventually they will become stable. Right now they're in beta but they will eventually become stable and then learning them will pay off big time I think. So let's get right into which file types and concepts are new and how they will help you in your development journey. Here we are in a Next.js 13 application and if you're wondering how to do this for yourself, you can run npx create next app at latest and then have the flag experimental dash app and if you run that, that's gonna create uh, yourself a completely new um, Next.js 13 app including the new app directory and everything that's, you know, involved in Next.js 13. Uh, this is not a completely new project, I've already done a Tailwind implementation, but that's it. So it's almost completely new and I've changed nothing really about the structure, just a bit of Tailwind uh, integration. So when you start out, you have a page and a layout and you can't actually delete this layout and understanding these two pages is crucial in understanding how to route in Next.js 13. So the page.tsx is not called index.tsx anymore as it was in the old pages directory. Also with the old pages directory, they have an incremental adoption approach. So if I were to create a file called like some page.tsx here, and then I could still go to the browser to some page.tsx, uh, that will still work. So having pages uh, in here doesn't really uh, do anything, it's just essentially like the old Next.js pages directory. Now what you can't do is have the same file name in the app and in the pages because then Next.js wouldn't know which page to route to. But um, okay, let's take a look at the app. So it's not called index anymore, it's called page.tsx, but it is essentially from the content the same thing as an index.tsx in the old Next.js and we have a layout.tsx that you can't remove. So what exactly is the layout? In this layout, we have a argument, children, and we pass that children to the body. They have some structure around it, the HTML and the head. And I've already created a layout component. So this is the same thing we had before. Same thing as this, just the structure is a bit better and type safe, like this is the TypeScript approach we would do. And anytime you create a layout component, that means that all pages at the same level or the levels lower, like in subfolders, will get rooted through this layout. So let's take a look at how that looks uh, in practice. Let's give the layout a background red of 500 and the page will say index page. And we will save that start up. Okay, the server's already started and we go to localhost 3000 and take a look at how this looks in the browser. So we can see the index page, what we have in the, um, and by the way, if you're wondering, I have a little um, project open here on the side where I've done all this stuff already. So um, if I peek over there, you know that it's just to explain this a bit better. Um, so as we can see in the browser right here, we have the index page and then the red background. So nowhere here is the red, red background mentioned, but uh, the page gets routed through the layout because it's at the same level or below, in this case, at the same level. And um, so it will get passed to the layout and the layout will then be rendered on the page. Now, besides the layout, there's another thing we can have and that is the uh, template.tsx. So let's create a functional component for that. And that template also receives the same thing as the layout. So that is a React node type. And why would you want to use the template instead of the layout? Because you can also use both at the same time. So we can say class name of text like green 500 and then take a look at what happens in the browser. So let's reload the page. And now, okay, it just says template because we are not rendering the children anywhere. We can render those out, reload the page. And now we can see the page we have right here first gets passed to the template and then that template gets passed to the layout. And that's really interesting because you could use both simultaneously. Um, Next.js themselves recommend using the layout instead of the template if you don't have a reason to use the template. But reasons for the template could involve you want some 
uh, let me Google what that some unif uniform like uh, consistent you want consistent animations so in the template you would define one animation with some animation library and then every page that is below or at the same level of this template will have the same animation which is pretty cool and now the last thing you can have is the head but I'm gonna get to that example later first let's take a look at how the routing works and in Next.js 13, the way you create routes is not with files anymore. So you don't uh, create a new file and then page xyz.tsx. And then if you go into the browser to page xyz.tsx, that page is going to appear. No, that's not how it works anymore. And then you Next.js, you create folders. And that's the difference. So if I create a folder, let's call that folder users. And that's going to allow us to have a really good example. In this users folder, we're going to have one user that is going to be called John. So let's have a user John. And OK, so I said we create folders for page. So then, according to what I said, we should be able to go to slash users slash John, because that is a um, those folders exist in our project. And then it should show them something, right? Well, no, it doesn't, because the way Next.js 13 works is we need to have files and that file is always going to be called page.tsx. So what we're not doing anymore is creating a file called john.tsx inside of users, but we are creating a folder called whatever the page should be uh, up here in the URL. So in our case, john, and then inside that folder name is just going to be a page.tsx. And that name is now, um, you know, assumed by Next.js. So we can't call this whatever we want. This needs to be called page.tsx. And now when we save that, um, we can say John in here. And now if we navigate to users John, refresh the page, it's going to say John. So that's how we got this route to work. Let's now make a second user. And the way we do that is the same. We go to new folder. Let's call it Bob. And inside Bob, because this is just an empty folder, we need a page.tsx. And inside that page.tsx, there we can have our actual page and that's going to say, um, for example, Bob. And let's reload the page, go to slash users slash Bob. And as you can see, now the new Bob route also works. And now is where the layout component really shines. So for every page that we have in the users, we want some kind of similar layout. And the way we do that is we go to wherever the files are, so users, and then create a file called layout.tsx. It's going to be layout component. So pretty much just a functional component that receives children that are of type React Node. But you really only need to worry about this at all if you're using TypeScript. If you're using JavaScript, this doesn't matter. You can just receive the children. And now let's say uh, for every user, um, we want a um, background of uh, red of 200. And just so, so this doesn't conflict, I'm going to remove any styles from the original layout and template. So remove the background red. Now we have no styles except for the layout that is for the users. Save all of this, refresh the page. And now this is not working yet. Why is this not working? OK, I just uh, was really confused as to why this layout wasn't working. And this layout is working. The reason it isn't uh, right now is because uh, I kind of messed up the Tailwind integration. So if you want to have Tailwind in the new Next.js 13, then you don't want to import it at page.tsx, but inside the layout, because now uh, the layout will wrap everything because it is at the root of the project. And as I said, um, pages at the same level or below, so in subfolders, will be involved in that layout. So if we read out the page, OK. That was the reason. So pay attention to that. Import the globals.css or any CSS you want in the layouts and not the pages. OK, so as we can see right now, um, both Bob and John have the same layout. So we can go to Bob, we can go to John. And because they are both um, below or at the same level of this layout, so in the users folder, we have Bob, John, and then the layout. Um, because we have that structure, they will both have the same layout. Now, what if we wanted to create a third user, but exclude that user from this layout, for example, one user by the name of Jim Bob, 
but we still wanted that user to be available at slash user slash Jim Bob. How do we do that in Next.js 13? And the approach would be the following. We are going to use something called a route group. And what does that mean? So in Next.js 13, you can create a folder and call it something that is wrapped in uh, like these round, I think it's called parentheses, like whatever you use in, in JavaScript functions, like these yellow things right here. That's what I mean. The, I think it's called parentheses. And after creating that folder, we can put it inside of our users, for example, and then we can put all our files inside of there. So essentially what we did is we have the same structure, but everything moved to uh, another folder called in parentheses names. Now, um, so according to Next.js 12 logic, we would go to users, names, and then Bob, right? But what routing groups do is everything that is mentioned in parentheses in your routes will not be part of the URL. So we wouldn't type in um, like names slash Bob right here. That wouldn't do anything. That page doesn't exist because everything that's wrapped in parentheses, you don't type. That is just for your structure as a developer. This will not be part of the actual URL. So you can name this whatever you want. It's not, it's, it's simply for your structuring. Um, so we can still go to users Bob. It's going to be the exact same thing. We can still go to user John and um, everything that's in this folder will now have the layout. But now we can create a new folder called um, Jim Bob. Inside of there, we're going to have as always a page.tsx, um, have a functional component and it's going to be called Jim Bob. And the structure we have now is we have the users folder that involves everything. Then we have names in these parentheses and we have Jim Bob as at the same level as the names. And that is how we're excluding it from the layout. So the layout right now only applies to John and Bob because Jim Bob is one level above the layout and therefore it doesn't apply. So if we go to the browser and then user slash Jim Bob, we see that Jim Bob is excluded from the layout and that's how we do it. And as I said, these do not get propagated into the URL. So we can still go to users and then Bob and John like before. I think if you understood what I just said, you grabbed one of the most important concepts of Next.js 13. And now let's jump a bit more into the uh, more advanced stuff. So one thing you can also do um, is have dynamic routes, as you know, from Next.js 12. And you can say like name.tsx inside this name.tsx, we're going to have a page.tsx, have a functional component. And we're going to just say um, other name, because if the name is not Bob or John, then this name.tsx will get rendered. So if we go to users slash David, then okay, this page could not be found. And why can this name not be found? Because Oh, okay. And I was like bug fixing for like two minutes right here because I couldn't figure out why this wasn't working. And uh, you don't want to include the uh, file ending, of course, in the folder naming. Uh, that is not what you want to do. So it's just uh, in, in brackets name and dot name dot tsx. And now if we navigate to something like users David, then uh, the page that we have right here is going to get rendered. However, if we go to user slash David slash one, then this page couldn't be found. Now I'm going to get into why in a second. First, let's see how we would get the um, params on this page. So the way that we get the params in Next.js 13 is right here through the params. And these just automatically get paid, uh, get sent to this uh, page.tsx that is uh, wrapped in a dynamic, uh, you know, brackets. And we can receive the params. In this case, that's going to be an object that has uh, the name as a string. But you can make sure uh, what type it is for you just by logging out the params. And then we're going to say other name. And that is going to be params.name. And now, whatever name we're going to pass as the URL right here. So in this case, David should show up right here. So other name David. And if we go to uh, carry or whatever, then that will also be mentioned right here because we're receiving those as the params. So that's, I think, a great improvement over Next.js 12. Now you can also get access to the search params. Um, so search params and then search params would be 
let's just say any it doesn't really matter and let's log out the search params in here um so because this is a server component we would get them right here and not in the user console so let's say question mark id is one two three send that to the server and now we can see the search params logged out to the server console um, which is id one two three now if the concept of server and client components is client components is new to you this is also a concept introduced in nextjs 13 if we say use client up here then it's not going to be in the server console anymore but it's going to be in the client console but that's a concept for a different video and apparently it doesn't work okay it's still getting logged out in the server console uh, i'm not quite sure why but it doesn't really matter anyway so that's a concept for a different video um, but we can see the search params actually arrive in this component and we can work with them however we want here now in this case we don't need them okay and now one advanced concept is we can as i mentioned earlier also have a case where we have david and then we want david one right and in this case uh, that this page could not be found now what you can also do instead of the dynamic brackets we can have a catch all and we do that by inserting three dots before so bracket dot 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 and then name closing bracket and by doing that that would also match everything so abc slash one two three slash abc one two three that would match everything and uh, pass it as the uh, params uh, in an array to this component so when we log out the params you can see if we reload the page what gets passed we have an array and that array contains um so david as the first then slash one so the a whole string is pretty much split at the slashes so we have david one abc one two three and then abc one two three because those were the parameters that we gave the browser and now comes some really interesting stuff so besides having a catch-all we can get even more crazy and we can have something that is <laughs> catching even more so we can have a double bracket and this might give us an error now in the console so let's reload the page Okay, we won't get an error but we might get one now no we don't okay so this works just fine so essentially what uh, this notation right here does is it doesn't match anything um like it doesn't only match anything that is you know slash and then whatever we type so slash david so slash users slash david we have here and then this would be slash users this is skipped because it's in uh, um, like parentheses slash david it doesn't exist anywhere here and so we can also catch that by having the double brackets if we didn't have the double brackets um remove them for now save that then this page would be um something different this would be um not found so the users is a page we don't have but by calling this as a double bracket this will also catch whatever comes before it uh, so in this case the users um so it would be the index page pretty much for the users so reload the page and now the index page for the users is this double bracket notation because it also goes uh, fourth one step now the reason i was curious as to why this might give an error is because if we had a page.tsx for the users then Next.js uh, probably wouldn't know which page to render. So if we go to users, um, that would match this name right here, but it would also match this page.tsx. So Next.js would be like, yo, which page should I render now? And we can see that uh, in the console right here. You cannot define a route with the same specificity or optional catch as an optional catch all route. So the name as double brackets and the page.tsx are pretty much the same page. And so Next.js, uh, prioritizes this page right here but it gives you the warning you shouldn't be doing this and now one final step i want to show you to really hammer the point home of how to work with the new layouting and stuff is a uh, one more file name that i haven't introduced so there's layout there's template there's page and there's one more so we can change this back to the normal catch all and let's say for every name that we have we want to have the name as the uh, tab title how would we go about that because um the next 13 provides a different way for that instead of using the next head like here we can also say um just head 
app.tsx that head component can return um, only four specific things. So a head component can return the title, meta, link, and a script. So we return those in these, um, how are they called again? These fragments. And inside of these fragments, we can have a title and that might be, um, well, we can try just a name for now. So every tab is gonna have the title of name. We can save that, reload the page. Okay, that uh, doesn't work yet. So the reason this didn't work is because we specified it in the name, but we were at user Bob. So just by the logic is we go into Bob and there is no head. Uh, so this wouldn't work, but because we specified it in the name, so that means every time this name is not Bob, John, or Jim Bob, then this head would um, get rendered. And which makes sense, right? On, on these pages that you statically define, you already know the name, but on this one you don't know, because what the user types in here can be carry or it can be any name, and you want that out, you want to render that out as the tab title. So. Um, right now we just have the word name literally being returned as the tab name. So um, how do we get the carry? Well, it's the same approach as getting the um, search params right here. So in the head we also get a params. And let's just not worry about whatever those are. And let's just render out, or actually we can worry about them. Let's log them out to the console, params, and then have the params right here. So every time we enter a name that is not Bob, Jim, or Jim Bob, or whatever, we get the uh, params. So params is an object that has a name property that is an array, um, and that is a string array. So we can say const name is equal to params.name, and we can just destructure the first thing from that array, and then have that as the page title. And now this won't work for something like uh, Bob, for example, because that's not where the head applies in our structure. But if we were to enter David again, then as you can see, the tab title has become David because we only match this head every time this catch all gets matched, which won't get matched if we enter Bob or John, because these are prioritized over the catch all. And this is just for everything else that comes after that. And then we put that as the title in a head.tsx, which is also new in Next.js 13. And with that said, we covered the most important part of the Next.js routing in 13. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like further reading on this topic, then I'm gonna link some posts in the description, like the original Next.js routing on defining routes, which is also very helpful, and how I prepared my example project over here that I used for, uh, you know, just getting with you into the structure of routing in Next.js 13. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one and bye bye.